So now moving to these were the diffuse gliomas we found. Now we go to circumscribed gliomas. Circumscribed gliomas, astrocytoma, uh, subepidermal giant cell astrocytoma, PXAs. These are all to some extent we call them as a circumscribed gliomas. Usually they occur in uh, young adults. Mostly cerebellum hypothalamus is the common uh, locations. Third, third, or third ventricle versus optic pathway. You can see them. Sometimes you can see them in spinal cord. They're very insidious, slow growing, and they are surgically curable in majority of the cases. A subset of them don't do well. Okay, now that is being addressed in the new WHO. Okay, this is how the imaging looks like. So this is the, again the sagittal image. You can see that is the child here. You are we on the what you are seeing the bright spot in the brain on the in the tentorium below in the uh, what you call it the posterior fossa or the cerebellum. You can see there are two two areas. One is bright and one is very dark. So dark is the cystic component. Okay, and the uh, bright spot is the neural enhancing nodule. That's the term we use. Okay, for pilocytic, this is a lesion in the cerebellum which is cystic with a neural enhancing nodule. Okay. And here is the gross specimen. On the right hand side, what you see white is the is the adjacent cerebellar tissue because this respects the boundaries. It does not infiltrate. It's an expanding type of a glioma. And the area which is cystic on the left hand side, you, the cyst collapses when the fluid comes out and it looks very small. But it's a mural nodule that will house the tumor cells. And this is a smear preparation here. As I told you, there are the tumor cells are here and very long hair-like processes. These are bipolar neurons and we call them as a uh, hair-like. Pylod means hair-like. So this is the this has taken the derived the name from pilocytic and derived from the long thin hair like processes. Okay, so here you see it is usually a biphasic tumor. On right hand side of the image, you can see there is a bright pink area, and here you can see lighter pink area. On the extreme side, extreme end, the left end of the slide, you can see some small blue dots are there. These are the neurons of the cerebellum. So you can see how it is nicely respecting the boundaries, not destroying the but expanding the cortex and you can see two different areas okay the that is why it's called as biphasic tumor so depending on where the biopsy comes from it can become misleading if you get in the area which is lighter pink zone the cells look somewhat different and until you see this is the two areas okay when you go to left hand side is the more pink area and you in the center what you are seeing the uh, hyaline structure very deeply eosinophilic uh, structures Okay, next to the nuclei, those are Rosenthal fibers. Okay, and on the other hand, right hand panel, you are seeing the lighter pink areas where the cells look more rounded, and these pink blobs, what you are seeing, they are called as eosinophilic granular bodies. Whenever we see this, we take a step back and we tell ourselves that we are seeing Rosenthal fibers, we are seeing eosinophilic granular bodies. This is probably a low grade or a slow growing tumor. This is the two histomorphologic features. If you see here, actually the differential diagnosis histologically for pilocytic astrocytoma is oligo. Okay, because I told you there are some areas here in the lighter area. If the needle passes there, you will be stuck and you may end up calling it as other oligo. But whereas if you go in the other area, you can call it. That is why imaging is so important. You go back and look. It doesn't look, it does not look anything like an oligo. Here we have a cyst with a mural enhancing nodule. We know it is classical child cerebellar location and this morphology, it has to be pilocytic astrocytoma grade one tumor, okay? So many a times we see, now we know there are genetic alterations that we see in pilocytic astrocytoma. We are called as BRAF mutations and fusions, okay? BRAF gene can show through a lot of uh, different abnormalities in uh, pilocytic, especially cerebellar pilocytic in children, you see BRAF fusions. A portion of the gene replicates itself, makes its a counterpart of itself, and then fuses. That's called as a BRAF fusion. There are a lot of fusion partners now identified, okay? And there will be BRAF mutations, point mutations also, like V600E, valine is replaced by threonin. So what we what we do is that point mutations are different, fusions are different. So in the non-cerebellar location, whenever we see pilocytic outside of the cerebellum, brainstem, and hypothalamic region you tend to see BRAF mutations as the abnormalities. For some reason, it's not very clear. So, but you can see both of them in pilocytics.
Okay. So here is what happens. So initially, the BRAF gene, the first, the I focus on the lower hand side where there is the cartoon depiction. So the cell is hit by a BRAF mutation or a BRAF gene abnormality, and it starts proliferating. So BRAF is very peculiar. During this initial phase of proliferation, if the P16 or the cyclin D kinase or a nine, it which maps 9P21, this gene remains intact. This is a tumor suppressor gene. Okay, if it remains intact for by some means, there will be tumor-induced senescence gets activated, and the tumor undergoes senescence, and you'll never and it'll stop proliferating. But on the other hand, during the initial uh, proliferation phase, you do develop p16 abnormalities. Then the story changes altogether for a pilocytic. It becomes aggressive. It starts changing colors. It starts coming back. Then it it can become even become an aggressive or a high-grade glioma. So now there is a um, entity that they have introduced in the new WHO, the 2021, okay? They call this as a high-grade glioma with pyeloid features. We don't know whether they start as su such or they transform in between. We don't know, but there are a subset of tumors which have pilocytic morphology but behave aggressively, okay? This is a small subset, but still they are there. So many a times, I, these days, I'm doing P16 on all the pilocytic astrocytomas, okay, when I come across. So another feature that tells you that the pilocytic may not behave well is loss of ATRX. Routinely, ATRX is intact in pilocytic, but when we see loss of expression for P16, start worrying. And if there is P16 comes again mutant or the pattern is mutant on the IAC, then we are going to worry that this is likely to come back, warn the surgeons. If they have to do, take it all out, keep a close watch on things. It may recur. We had one such case actually. Okay, this is one case that came to us, 20-year-old woman who was heterogeneously enhancing mass radiologically. And I'm telling you one thing, both radiologists and the neuropathologists, I'm telling you this is a, a graveyard for us. They come, pilocytics come in lot of flavors, lot of colors, and lot of morphologic patterns. And even a seasoned neuropathologist in the United States has lost his practice because he missed out on a pilocytic astrocytoma, it was called as high grade, patients got radiated and they lived to tell the story and they were sued and they, it has ended the careers of many neuropathos in the United States. That's how this pilocytic is. That's why I'm telling you repeatedly that pilocytic, be careful, know everything about it. Okay? We did have one certain similar case here and necrosis which we associate so much with the high grades was seen in this tumor. Left lower hand panel tells you that there is a necrosis in the center, the tumor cell has lysed. And what is uh, difficult with pilocytics, they also have what is called as endovascular hyperplasia, which can be mistaken by a young pathologist, naive pathologist who doesn't know about this entity, will end up calling this as high grade because he or she associates endovascular proliferation or the proliferating vessels as a feature of a hallmark of a high grade glioma. And to make matters worse, they radiologically also, they can have contrast enhancement. They come in lot of flavors. We have seen many, many times here, here itself, that uh, surgeons, lab, the neuroradiologists labeling it as an infiltrating glioma or high grade glioma, we end up calling it as otherwise. So the onus is on us to prove that we are right. Okay. So this did happen. And uh, we did all the other workup also, neurofilament, few cells were there, periphery, there was infiltration. KI, proliferation index was almost 1% or 1 to 2 maximum. BRAF came positive, V690 came positive in this case. And the kicker was the P16 for us. P16 had come diffuse and strongly positive, suggesting a possible mutant clone of P16. We had warned the surgeons. I said, look, this is looking like a pilocytic. It has low K index. Don't be reassured. And then please keep a patient on close follow-up. And sure enough, within one year, this tumor has recurred because of its P16 business. Okay. So BRAF came positive and P16 had come positive. And the, now the tumor patient is undergoing radiation and chemotherapy. So it has recurred now. So pilocytics can do, we call it as atypical pilocytics with all the bells and whistles we could think of. We wrote in the comment, lengthy comment we wrote, and we suggested that this is not to be confused with the conventional low-grade uh, pilocytic, but be wary, P16 is come positive. It is likely to recur, P please keep a close eye. That's what we, we've heard, uh, given a lot of stress and grief to the neurosurgeons. 